Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. Today I'm going to guide you in a beautiful, colorful practice inspired by my recent trip to Mexico, in particular inspired by the Talaveras Mexicanas, which are traditional Mexican tiles. These tiles are gorgeous, they are extremely colorful, they feature floral, geometric and organic patterns. They are, you know, handmade and hand painted, at least the real, you know, the original one. And to me, they are like not only very beautiful for the way that they look, but also for what they represent. They represent, in fact, the fusion between the local native art that was already existing in Mexico before the colonization. So, and the art and design that Spaniard brought from Spain when they colonized that country. And it's kind of a beautiful, symbol of resilience in the way that I think, um, you know, even during a dark, awful time with, you know, oppression and violence, because this is what colonialism was and is, humans are able to create beauty and they, you know, create something beautiful and they just uh, uh, keep uh, living and hoping for something, you know, for a better future. So. It is really uh, impressive, honestly, like uh, how humans, how, you know, ourselves, even in the darkest of the time, uh, we are able to see beauty, identify it and create it. For this practice, I will use my mixed and media journal. So you can use your mixed and media journal or a mixed and media paper. Remember, if you're using a piece of paper and maybe it's bigger than mine, don't do it too big. Divide your regular, let's say that you have a 9 per 12 pad, divide your page in two so you don't do a very like big design and you don't feel overwhelmed. Do something that is a nice size for you so you can commit. Uh, you need a pencil, of course, for drawing, an eraser just in case. And today I will personally use uh, traditional watercolors. So you will need, in case you want to use the watercolors, <clears throat> excuse me, you have your watercolor palette, any brand that you have available, a couple of brushes, small and very small, a cup with water, towel paper in case you need to, you know, dry and tap your brush. And basically that's it. If you do not have a traditional watercolors or you don't want to use them, if you have a brush markers, this is a very good practice uh, for the brush markers. Now, let's say that you feel a little uh, less experienced with watercolor and so for you, the action of uh, tracing strokes with the brush is too challenging. The brush marker will give you the little more control and you can still play around and do some blending and mixing with those. Finally, if you prefer to use the coloring pencils, do it because this will be really beautiful and you can blend the pencil and the colors together. And if you have a watercolor pencil, you can design with a pencil, color it with a watercolor pencil and then gently brush a little bit of water on top, you know, actually, sorry, blend a little bit of water on top of the color. So once again, I will put in the description box the material that I use, but also alternatives. You have to do you and adapt your practice. Before we start, I just want to let you know that I will personally do the design freehand, so I won't use any tools because the traditional and real Talaveras, they are beautifully done and very well crafted, but they are not geometrically perfect because they are handmade and hand painted. So I like that, you know, element. But if you feel that you have a little shaky hands or you don't feel ready or you prefer a geometrically perfect design, feel free to use tools that can help you, such as a ruler, for example. You can trace the outline of the square with the ruler and then you can measure the sides. You can decide, you know, exactly where is the half of it if you want and if you need to do so. I will guide you step by step. I just do it with the free hands because I like that better for myself. But as I always say, you, I encourage you to use my video, my tutorial and stretch them and change them and twist them and adapt them to your own personal experience. 
um, remember friends that there are um, membership available silver membership golden membership i just recently found a group on facebook that is called art with miss b if you want to join us i will love it is a private group just for people that are you know using this platform and they are part of uh, our community and is a very nice safe uh, space where you can share what you have been creative using my tutorials and my video and i will post the picture of what i created and you know during our uh, video together um what else nothing just let's get ready find yourself a beautiful comfortable spot maybe you want to put some nice music to relax and let's start to practice and learn about the talaveras mexicanas Okay, friends, here we are, and this is my journal. I know that this is a mix and media journal, so it's not specifically a watercolor journal, but today I will use watercolor. If you have a good quality of mix and media paper, it will hold the wet media. Now with my pencil, as we always do, I'm gonna reframe these pages in a square. This time I'm gonna do it a little smaller so we don't have to commit to a huge design. I collected many beautiful examples, so very slowly you will Trace your lines once again. I'm doing it free hands. Feel free to use a ruler. So as I was saying, I collected a beautiful example of Talavera Mexicana, Mexicanas, and I will share with you multiple designs. I'm thinking that I will share with you four different designs because you can stretch them, combine them, and create a beautiful composition out of it. So out of one practice, you will have basically several practice, and out of four different designs, you can really play around more. Now, you have your square done, so more or less, you will individuate the half, the center, and with the very extremely light lines, just like that you can barely see, you're gonna trace this line, and the same you're gonna do in the horizontal. As you see, my lines are pretty accurate, but not perfect. If you're using a ruler, you will have it perfect. You barely can see the one in the center because we don't want them to bother us in the design. The first design that I'm gonna do is inspired by some flowers, which is my favorite flowers. So favorite flowers. So we're gonna start, of course, from the center and we want a pretty big center. Now, these sections that you created, they're gonna help you to trace a better circle, okay? So you can kind of work a quarter by quarter very gently with the pencil. Remember that we can use a dynamic lines, which means that we don't have to do it all in once, but we can kind of guide our hands step by step. And these beautiful sketching dynamic lines will give you a pretty accurate circle. If it's not perfect, once again, is exactly the style of the Talavera. So this, the goal for this practice is not to have a perfect a geometrical and organic pattern, but is to kind of, a, in fact, my, it's a, not exactly in the center, as you can see, but it's fine, is to just exercise our fine model skills, learn about a new artistic tradition and traditional design, and exercise a little bit our skill with watercolor. Now we start with nice, beautiful petals. We go up with a curved line and back down. We go up and back down. As you can see, is nothing, it's not realistic at all, is an inspiration and an idea. Native art uh, was never like in general, North, Central and South American native art was never focused on perspective, hyperrealism, it was really based on different standards that European art. If you think about the Renaissance in Italy and all the rules that they established for art and design, native art was totally free of those rules. Now, I love Renaissance, of course, as an Italian, you know, as you can imagine, I grew up surrounded by beautiful things and I'm so grateful, right, that they did what they did. However, I really appreciate the native art, which is more focused on uh, colors and lines, the pure elements of art and design, and not concerned at all about the perfection of the perfect perspective or whatsoever. Now we're gonna create a sort of a four corner leaves with this bumpy cur curved line. 
We're going to do the same over here. We go up to three and turn and two back. the line now if you need you can erase the lines that we trace at the beginning so they really won't bother you at all they should come off pretty easily unless you push too hard if that happens don't worry because you're learning and you're practicing but it's a very good exercise for you to learn how to moderate the pressure that you apply on the pencil And now we're gonna start to paint and color. And after it is all dry, we're gonna add the little design with the watercolor or with an extra fine black markers or with a color, like colorful markers, whatever you think that it works better for you. I'm gonna use a, a small brush. I'm gonna start from the center. You do not have to copy my choice of colors. You can really make your own choices. Remember that there is always, you should always be uh, personally connected with an artwork that you're doing. We proceed carefully, slowly. The beauty of watercolor is that they allow us to paint without taking too long, but also they will show up a different intensity, right? Different saturation of the same color. Stay inside the lines so that we trace together. If something happened and the watercolor bleed a little bit outside, it's totally fine. Actually, it's gonna be beautiful and it will give the piece characters. These styles, in fact, come with a lot of characters. They are all unique because as I say, they are hand painted. So imagine that you have a beautiful, I don't know, backsplash in your kitchen or maybe in a bathroom, right? They will, they're all like feature the same design, but somehow like they are all unique. So with a tiny little imperfection that we want to embrace because that little imperfection make that piece unique. Tied to that very moment and that, you know, very experience that you're having while painting it and it's, you know, there's so much value in it, right? I always say to my students that we belong to uh, the imperfectionism, a new movement, right? That was like the perfectionism movement, the impressions movement, we should belong to the imperfectionism. Now I'm mixing two colors, a nice orange, with yellow so I'm gonna have a light bright orange and once I have my color ready I'm gonna start to paint the petal for this particular design and technique we are using watercolor with the right amount of water we don't want it too much right because otherwise you cannot control the colors they will look very pale and not very saturated but also they will bleed too much Right, a little bit of bleeding into each other, it's fine, but if it's too much, then it's gonna compromise the design that we traced. Please, if you're using another media, such as watercolor pencil or just regular coloring pencil, because that's your favorite, or you're using brush markers, make sure that once you finish, you first. Uh, uh, send me a request to join our Facebook group so you can share the picture of your final uh, result, but also just let me know here in, on YouTube through the comment, what did you use and how did it go? I love, love, love to receive a, some of like many feedback, but most of all, I love when you share your own experience and you let me know that you did it in a different way, that you use a different color palette, I will love it. This is exactly the reason why I do what I do.
And so I want to thank you for that. What I love about this Talaveras and this design that I will guide you in the next, uh, uh, in these plus other three videos is that, that they are pretty simple, right? You can make them as complicated and as simple as possible, but in their simplicity, they are so fresh and so easy to connect with, right? I'm you can focus on developing your skill with watercolor. You can dare to experiment a little bit because the project itself, it's kind of a linear and not extremely difficult. So it will give you the opportunity to really and boldly uh, practice and, you know, experiment a little bit with color, for example, or we the brush so this is a perfect project uh, for example if you want to get better with brush strokes right you want to be able to fill spaces with the uh, brush strokes you want to this is a perfect project because it is not it's not too complicated and it's not intimidating at all it's really easy to connect This palette is so warm and nice. It makes me really, really uh, feel happy. Today is a gray outside. It's a little rainy. Well, now the sun is coming again, but was the light was not the best. So this palette is actually perfect. Now let's choose the color for this petal. Behind, I would say that I might mix. Uh, I'm gonna go with a yellow and a very light skin color. So I'm gonna kind of uh, mute the yellow a little bit. Just do your experiment and also remember that you might have a very different palette that I have. So feel free to mix your own color. So in my palette, I just use the traditional yellow and I mix it a little bit with a very like very light. Uh, skin color so a very very light peach pink just to mute the yellow a little bit if in your palette you don't have those colors you can decide to go darker maybe and mix the yellow with something else or just do red you know and have fun with that and see how it goes The beautiful things also about like one of the aspects that I love the most about Mexican art is that it's so colorful. Like, you know, th they have such a, a deep connection and very spontaneous connection with color. So they go bold. They really match beauty. You know, it's fantastic. It makes me immediately, I connect with that, with Mexican art immediately. I feel transported inside. I don't know if I can even express this sensation and this feeling with words because it's something very personal and very individual and might be completely different from person to person. But it's like I'm a, I have a peculiar relationship with color. For example, in the house, I like some spot of color but I like also neutral earth tone, very warming, you know, very welcoming and relaxing. Even when I dress, uh, I'm not very colorful, honestly. I'm kind of a modest in color. But then it's when I paint and I color and I do art is when I really kind of uh, uh, release all of my creativity through color. So it's a, a very different connection. And Mexican art, art it's like, it's just fantastic, it's amazing. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to start to uh, paint the leaves. Definitely I will use green, but I really would like to make it a sort of a aqua so we'll see what can i can do i have this dark green but if i mix it with this light aqua it should give me 
So I'm mixing a deep turquoise with a very, very light aqua color. And this is what it's giving me. Beautiful, like a... I would say aqua green, teal, turquoise. Call it as you wish, you know. Look how pretty came here when I, I like uh, I painted with the orange a little bit outside and now with the overlapping. Okay, a little bit of water, the dark turquoise on top of the aqua and off we go again. As you notice, you know, I'm using a mix and media paper, which as I say before, is not specifically a watercolor paper, however, if it's that, you know, it's a good quality, it will allow, you know, it will hold the wet media and the result will be still pretty decent. If you're using a watercolor paper, of course, you will have a different texture and a different absorption. Oh my, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, but I know that you understood of the color into the paper, of course. more water and I really like the fact that using watercolor you will have like this trace of the you know brush strokes uh, more saturation and more intensity of the color and less uh, I like it because it looks like you know it's really hand painted it looks like the the real thing the real talavera I like to do some outlining of the space that I have to paint. So then I feel that. I can follow it better. And we are now at our last leaves and smooth and here we are I'm gonna kind of gonna go on top of this one one more time just be careful mostly if you're not using watercolor paper just don't you know, go over and over too many times because you can dent or ruin the paper and we don't want that. But I really love that we see all the strokes. Now, I'm gonna color the background. And once again, this is your decision to make. I will personally just go with a very, very light, light, light blue and always on the aqua side, but you can go for a completely different color. You can go with a very pale brown, you can go with a peach, with a pink, you can go with a red. And that color will definitely impact your design differently and will create a, a completely different visual experience. So once again, look at your color palette, don't rush, make your decision. And when you're ready, this time we're gonna really control the amount of water. We don't want the color to bleed in. We're gonna really keep our design 
nice and neat we take our time and this is really really relaxing for me because it's like that we are filling the gaps we are completing our background we are finally kind of embracing our design and once again if you're using a different color go for it and just let me know what did you use and how did it look to you what is the feeling that you had after the design was all done Now, after we finish to paint uh, the tile, let's call it the Talavera, we're going to let it dry completely. And it should take very little because we are not using a huge amount of water, right? And the paper is absorbing very well. If you're using a dry media such as pencil, even better. Probably you will take a little longer time to color because coloring with pencil, as you know, takes a little longer time. If you're using brush marker, you should be more or less at the same uh, stage that we are, and it will dry, of course, immediately. And so you don't even have to wait. But anyway, I'm gonna wait that the design is super dry, and then I'm gonna proceed to do details such as outlines and patterns and whatever you wanna add. This time is the first, I think, that I'm going to go, is the first design of Talavera that we do together. I think I'm going to try and go with the traditional extra fine black and I'm going to see how it looks like. And then for the following one, I will make maybe different choices or different decisions. So we will learn together how uh, different outlines, different color can impact the design differently so if you have like a, a package of sharpies extra fine tip they will definitely do if you have an other brand just uh, even gel pen as long as they have an extra fine tip they will do the job You see these two colors, they remind me the color of the water in the Riviera Maya. So the color of the ocean and I love it so much. And I feel that, you know, the ocean played and plays a very important role in the culture and art and tradition of Mexico. At least a part of it, because Mexico is so big that there are other area that they are really far from the ocean and maybe they have a big you know they have big and deep connection with mountains and forest it must be gorgeous uh, i can wait to go back and to keep my exploration it's such a fantastic uh, culture and so rich and i found also that for some aspect is similar to my Italian culture. For example, their beautiful, their amazing traditions and connection with food and with traditional dishes and the fact that they have traditional dishes for every region, exactly like it happens in Italy. And we are so devoted to our food. It's such a big part of our culture. It's a big part of what we are, who we are, and how do we live. And how do we relate and connect with food and how we express our loves and our feeling through food. So I feel that this aspect is very similar in uh, Mexican culture and Italian culture. And I personally love it. It's, I really felt at home, honestly. And I'm so fascinated and curious of, you know, learning uh, other country traditions, mostly when it comes really to food, because for me, it's a very important part of my identity. And I cook every day from scratch. I use only fresh and raw ingredients. 
I do not always follow the recipe that I have been taught in Italy, but I also make changes. I expand my knowledge here in the States. So we have so many different cultures, right? So those different cultures really are inspirations to me. And I expand uh, and I kind of create fusion of different uh, cuisine styles. And it's, uh, you know, we have a dinner, even if it's just for 20 minutes in the night, but we sit together, the three of us, and we have dinner together. So food is definitely uh, a big part of our identity. And I found that in Mexico, you know, was the same. And the food is delicious. I found it so beautiful that there is always so much that we can learn from each other, right? Uh, listening to each other and opening our mind and our heart to other culture and learn. And maybe do not, we don't need to embrace the whole thing, but maybe embrace a few things so that they resonate with you. I just said the whole thing, just it's fantastic. It's a process that make us grow as human and as yeah, as humans and as people. Now the design is all done and we're going to let this completely dry. I'm going to prep my fine extra markers. Um, extra fine. What did I say? Fine extra marker. That is fun. Extra fine markers and I will be ready for outlines and powder. Okay, now the design is all dry. And as I say, for this first experiment together, I'm going to use a traditional black then in another practice, I will use probably uh, color, colorful markers. Turn around the design, move it as you wish. You need to feel comfortable. Basically, what we do is like we trace the outlines first. If you have been using pencil, you can do this outline with pencil, actually. I feel that it would be more uh, cohesive. But once again... Every practice that we do, we are like, uh, we do it for the process and not for the final results. So even if you want to risk and you want to use the media and maybe at the end you see that it's not exactly what you wanted, it's still worth the experience. Because remember, as I always say, process is more important than product. As you notice, I am doing nicely around, like actually on top of the outlines that with the pencil, but I'm not taking like, I'm not super, super careful in having this black line be perfect and precise. I want to have actually some nice uh, imperfections. So let yourself go. Relax. Trust your hand. You can go as low as you want and you need. Trust the design and really enjoy we can go over the outline of the square so we created really the optical illusion of a tile If you need to use the rulers because you use it at the beginning, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, just very slowly do your best to stay on top of the lines that you trace with a pencil. And once again, embrace the imperfections. Now I'm starting to add a few like patterns. I do not want to overdo it, so I don't want to have too busy 
patterns, you know. The Talaveras, they are very colorful indeed and very rich in their design, but they also like carry an element of simplicity and freshness, right? Also imagine that they are tiles, right? So they are painted on ceramic and they are painted with ceramic paints, so with glazes. All the details are done with brushes. So probably these lines that we are applying right now, they're not like uh, accurate, you know, they are not copying exactly the tiles, but remember that we are adapting a design that goes on ceramic, we are adapting on paper. So I'm also thinking in my mind that what can look great on paper. I'm gonna start to do a little design inside the center of the flower. And I'm gonna just do these bumpy, curvy lines. They can suggest the texture inside the, you know, the center of the sunflowers. Pretend that you're doing scale. Try to make the second lines, the one that I'm tracing right now, fell between, basically in the center of each scale of the first line. If it doesn't happen, or if it happens for a while and then stop happening, it is totally okay, once again. If you need to go slower, go slower. We're now practicing our, once again, fine model skills, but also focus skills. We need to be completely focused on what our hand is doing on the paper. We do not lose sight of the design and we don't think about anything else that is not our design. Little by little, your scales will become a little more irregular in size and even in shapes, which is exactly what we want to happen. If you feel that you're about to lose it, take a little break and then you go back. There we go. And probably very, very dark inside of filling the space. Look how pretty, very nice. Now, I will not do any powder on the big petal because as I say, I don't want it to become a more like too busy, but I will do a little powder on the, the leaves the petal, sorry, behind. And I think that I will go with simple, smooth lines on one side of the petal and on the other side of the petal. You can make them more closer to each other. You can make them farther apart. You make your own decision. Once again, bring your personality and see what happened.
voila, a little Talavera's design is all done. I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. So we did it, friends. This is my 3D Talavera inspired design. And I will publish it on the Facebook page, Art with Miss B. So remember to subscribe to my channel, ask to join the Art with Miss B Facebook group. I will let you in and you can uh, maybe post a picture of your own design. I am so curious to, to know if you use the watercolors, if you use something different, if you went for a completely different color palette. The more we change, the more we share, the more we adapt to practice to our personality, the better. As I told you, I'm going to guide you in other three beautiful designs that will give us the opportunity to learn more about the Talaveras, uh, so Mexican art and design, exercise our fine motor skills, get more comfortable with a specific media and technique, and also exercise our mental focus and relaxation. So I see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti!